T minus one minute and counting. Report range status. Range status green. T-minus 30 seconds and counting. 28. ECS reduced for launch. 25. Roger. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. T-minus 15 seconds. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Main engine start, zero, and liftoff of the Atlas V with curiosity. Seeking clues to the planetary puzzle about life on Mars. Okay, the program is in right on time. 180 operating percent plus, as expected. And rattling down to 76 percent. Program complete. And NSL is now breaking the sound barrier. There be chamber pressures following the normal curve. Everything will be And we pass through max Q. We're on closed loop on Atlas BU. Signatures as expected. SRB profile continues to look nominal, throttling back up to 100% thrust on the RD-180. Engine parameters looking good. Flight control disturbances look as expected. SRB pressures running right as expected. Coming up on SRB burnout, we have burnout of the SRBs. Everything is looking good. 10 seconds to SRB jet. And we have first pair and second pair, both sets of SRBs have successfully jettisoned the vehicle. We have re-enabled guidance. Everything is looking good. This is Rob Gannon, our United Launch Alliance telemetry manager we're hearing. Vehicle is now 32 nautical miles in altitude, 54 miles downrange, traveling at 4,900 miles per hour. And we've throttled down to hold a constant 2.5 G level for payload fairing jettison. Fired the pyro valve, pressurizing the RCS bottle. Pressure increasing in the loop as expected. Now we're hitting our 2.5 G limit coming up on payload fairing. Edison, approximately 10 seconds. Bearing jet. And we also have a successful CFLR jettison, but as expected, throttling up on the RD-180, everything looking good. Coming up to 89% thrust. And we are now entering our constant 4.6G acceleration throttle phase. Everything looking good. We've started to boost phase chill down. Housing temps are responding. The 
coming up on booster engine cutoff. Expecting Vico in 10 seconds. Safety ADUs. We have Vico, retro rockets, and stage separation. We have pre start on fuel and locks. Ignition and full thrust. Since our main engine is up and running as expected. Everything looking good. Steering has been enabled. We have sent our PU to fixed angles, right as expected. And we've begun our reaction control system thermal conditioning firings. Everything looking good. And the vehicle is now 102 nautical miles in altitude, 570 miles downrange, traveling at 13,700 miles per hour. And we're now in the early portions of a nearly seven-minute first burn of Centaur. Engine continues to operate normally, good steady-state operating pressures. Engine continues to burn normally, seeing loop temps come up in the RCS system as we continue our thermal condition firings. Good AGCs on the FTS system. Approaching RF disable. This is the telemetry lab at NASA Hangar at, uh, AE, Atlas performance. where all the data is coming in from the flight. And we are rolling to Tedris. Acquisition now through the tracking and data relay satellite system, Tedris East. And we're continuing to roll to Tedris. Total of 75 degree change in attitude. Have switched to the Centaur only format quite a few minutes ago, seconds ago. And we've achieved our Tedris attitude. Roll rate's coming back in. Engine continues to look good. We've lost signal here at the Cape. As expected. Now using Antigua data. And passing 470 seconds into the mission, everything looking good. And the vehicle is 150 miles in altitude, 1250 miles downrange, traveling at 15,000 15, yeah, miles per hour. And we are seeing nice smooth responses from the flight control system. Body rates are smooth and very close to zero. We are accelerating at a steady 0.47 Gs. Engine continues to operate smoothly. And Centaur PU is in closed loop control, but uh, continues to ride the stop as expected.
and engine operating parameters continue to look good, nice and smooth. Centaur engine cutoff coming up in two minutes. Here, two minutes, Tomiko one. Vehicle's uh, 151 miles in altitude, 1,648 miles downrange, traveling at 16,100 miles per hour. And taking a quick look at the range track, the vehicle is flying right down the projected path. Everything looking good there. We're now one minute to a nominal MECO-1. Expecting an IP vanish in approximately 40 seconds. And the engine continues to operate nominally. Center PU has come off the stop. It is actively controlling. Uh, east Target is ready for the handoff from Antigua. Pressures look good. RCS temps reacting as expected. Steadied out. Ten seconds to make a one. We have cut off. Normal shutdown signatures. We have four S engines on as expected. Cutoff was right on time. Handing FDS off now from safe. Antigua to Tedris East. And we've begun our turn to MES2 attitude. Starting to spin up Centaur in roll for our PTC roll. Taking a quick look, tank pressures are right as expected. Helium storage bottle pressures over 3,000 psi looking good. Main battery voltage looks good. And we've achieved our one and a half degree per second roll rate for our PTC roll. This is Atlas Launch Control, 12 minutes 45 seconds into the flight. We had Centaur engine cut off right on time at T minus, or rather T plus 11 minutes and 30 seconds. And we are now in a parking orbit of 102 by 201 nautical miles. And we are underway with a 19 minute and 35 second coast phase, after which the Centaur will come up for a second and final time for an eight minute burn to put it on planetary trajectory. We're going to show now some of the different camera angles of the launch of the Atlas V from different vantage points around Kennedy Space Center and Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. And uh, we should have uh, uh, several different shots that uh, will present different vantage points that uh, will be particularly uh, unusual from the standpoint of uh, cameras that we have not used in the past. So we will begin uh, right now with the launch replays.